Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. It's great to see you all here today. Let's give uh, another 30 seconds for participants to log in. We would love to see where you are joining us from. Please type your location in the comments. We have still some participants logging in. But anyways, let's get started. Um, so welcome everyone to today's LinkedIn live session. Um, over the past several months, I'm sure all of us have seen the buzz around Gen AI, from it being the fastest tech to reach 100 million users, uh, to setting up of several $100 million funds, over a thousand plus startups already focusing on this space um, to Goldman Sachs predicting trillions of dollars of GDP impact. There is no question that Gen AI is not just a hype. We are starting this series of conversations today to bring on the ground perspectives from industry practitioners in a more informal and interactive format. We will explore some of the questions that are on your mind, such as how are senior enterprise stakeholders approaching Gen AI as a technology? What are the high priority production level use cases and applications? What are the key challenges and risks? And how can organizations be Gen AI ready? We would love to hear your comments and questions as we go along. So please type them in the chat and we would try and address during the discussion uh, and the Q&A uh, towards the end. As a quick introduction, uh, I'm Ashish Sehdev, Vice President at Everest Group and I lead our business in the region. Uh, I'm joined by my colleague Vishal Gupta, VP and Head of Data and AI Research, who brings in a wealth of experience and expertise in this space, as well as Piyush Kumar, Vice President, Head Data Engineering at Make My Trip, to share their Gen AI journey with us today. I'll let Vishal and Piyush quickly introduce themselves. Over to you, Vishal. Thank you, Ashish, and uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. I'm sure this is uh, the most exciting topic of our times, generative AI. Uh, so our intent today would be as what Ashish covered, right? To go beyond the hype and talk about, you know, what is actually happening on the ground. And we have Piyush with us, you know, who will be sharing, uh, you know, his journey at Make My Trip. But quickly, my introduction, uh, I'm a vice president with the firm. I lead uh, all our research and advisory in the broader data analytics and AI space. I've been covering this, uh, this area, this industry for more than 10 years now. Uh, and closely working on uh, furthering, you know, uh, and developing, you know, Gen AI artifacts and, uh, you know, developing the industry standards. So looking forward to this conversation. Piyush, over to you. Yeah, hi, uh, and hello everyone, right? So uh, as Ashish and Vishal quickly covered, right? So it's no longer a hype uh, primarily, right? So we, I, I would like to call it like, so post hype uh, phase right now where, uh, things are getting more into reality. Uh, things are getting shipped into production. So, uh, a, as company, primarily being in online online travel, uh, we are very excited. Uh, personally, as a technologist, I am very excited uh, about uh, whole advancements in AI overall and Gen AI specifically, uh, because like so, the use cases which we were not able to think through earlier. Uh, have gotten into reality with many experiments which we have shipped um, recently in past, right? So, yeah, happy to share our learnings um, with all of you uh, here. Um, yeah, I head the data platform engineering and personalization charter for Make My Trip and Go by Bebo Group. So, Make My Trip Group has multi brands. So, Make My Trip, Go by Bebo, Red Bus, Trip Money, etc. So, yeah. So I look after uh, Make My Trip and Go I Bebo side of uh, both uh, platform ensuring and uh, personalization space. Yeah, happy to share my learnings with all of you. Awesome, awesome. Thanks, uh, thanks, Piyush. Uh, so Vishal, uh, let me get this out uh, up front. Uh, how do you see Gen AI as a transformative uh, technology? Uh, I know we're uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, talk on, and it's been recognized as. Uh, 
the third uh, major platform platform shift, right? So after internet and cloud. Uh, but you know, based on the research that you are doing, um, where do you see rapid adoption? And do you believe Gen AI will still hold the CSU radar um, as we move uh, past beyond the hype phase? Yeah, so it's a it's a pertinent and interesting question, Ashish. Uh, you know, in all my conversations, and I think we are almost like closer to uh, a year of completion since you know uh, OpenAI launched ChatGPT last year in November. And and one of the questions that I keep getting, you know, still is look in the last decade or so, we have seen you know multiple major technology advancements, right? Right from blockchain to metaverse to crypto, and now you know we have generative AI. And the question I keep getting is, look, some of the past technological disruptions, they didn't come out to be, right? I mean, there was a lot of hype created around them, but then eventually the actual adoption never happened. Is this something similar with Gen AI? Will we see adoption or is it just kind of a hype period and then it will slowly die down? And I have a very strong conviction. I believe that it's not just hype. Yes, there is some hype and, you know, a lot of things, a lot of chatter and talk, you know, going on in the market, but I still believe that generative AI is something which is more foundational and fundamental, and it is going to see massive adoption. And let me draw parallels, right? Let me compare it with metaverse, metaverse and gen AI. Uh, see, metaverse in a lot of ways, you know, where we stand today, you know, meta has already wound up its, uh, you know, investments and imper imperative in metaverse, right? Metaverse is no longer something where a lot of people are investing or talking about. Maybe it was ahead of its time. But you know, if you if you draw parallels between metaverse and Gen AI, see, Met, there are two big or stark differences that come out. One, the metaverse in a lot of ways was a polarized bet. Meta pumped in billions, and then there was another company, Unity, who you know made a uh, good investment, and then everybody else in the ecosystem, be it the enterprise users, be it the you know uh, supply side ecosystem, both technology and service providers, or maybe the private equity investor community, all of them were still sitting on the fence thinking about what to do with metaverse, right? Whereas when it comes to generative AI, you know, chat GPT, open AI, open the floodgates. Everyone in the ecosystem, from enterprise users to technology vendors, to service providers, to the private equity investor community, every one of them has jumped the bad wagon. There is billions and billions of dollars being pumped into, you know, furthering their gen AI initiatives. My strong conviction is if so many entities and people have come together and put up so much money into something, I'm sure they're going to make something out of it. So that is one first difference that, you know, uh, I, I can make. Second is, if you really think about, I can give you an example. See, Decentraland, I don't know how many of you have heard about Decentraland. Decentraland was one of the most well-funded, you know, crypto-based meta product. At the height of its adoption, it had 8,000 average monthly user base. Now, compare this to chat GPT, you know, in five days, it reached a million. And today, you know, OpenAI says they have more than billion registrants with more than 100 million active average users monthly. If you look at the adoption, the adoption is as real as it gets because the use cases for metaverse were unclear. But the use cases for Gen AI, they're as clear as it can be. You know, there are real practical implications, practical uses of where the technology can be used. So these two, you know, broad contours makes me believe and gives me conviction that look yes there are hurdles and challenges that we need to solve for as an industry as a whole for generative ai but i believe that that the uh, technology is transformational and it can have real ground impact yeah yeah no absolutely vishal and so piyush uh, let me invite you to share your uh, story uh, at make my trip you know around ai and more specifically uh, gen ai you know, what are the use cases you're going after? How did you evolve in your journey? Uh, and also a bit of insight into why did you choose those areas over other areas? Uh, sure. Uh, you know, I 100% agree with Vishal, right? So like so many minds have come together uh, to solve uh, like real challenges. Uh, and like, so they are not just working only on one piece, which is like, just building either foundational models or like other pieces of generative AI, they they are solving other fundamental pieces, um, be it like so vector databases to be it any any other things, right? So industry has come together to solve this, and hence, right? So it looks more reality itself. Now coming to make my trip uh, specifically, right? So uh, and we saw real value, right? So it, it and then uh, like so it's not a. Uh, uh, 
we didn't treat it like a hype uh, trust me right so in our internal conversation that sector uh, we were looking at like some real world use cases primarily right so and we have been working in on, on this journey on on solving some customer problems primarily like so uh, either working um, internally or like so looking at some strategic partners uh, outside uh, as well from industry right so together right so uh, this time as well right so we partnered with microsoft primarily like so to look at like so strategically can can we think through um uh, like solving here are the uh, very clear objectives which we want to achieve both from solving customer problems and from business uh, side of it and bringing some competitive edge as well right so and and those were the pillars while um, we were trying to figure out okay which, which use cases primarily right and uh, just to talk about right so some of the use cases which went live uh, in recent past and th these were like starting with right so very chat gpt specific right so which is content summarization so uh, make my trip as a platform right so we collect good amount of user generated content in terms of reviews etc but at the end of the day when the user is coming in he, he may not be able to like so digest like thousands of reviews about a property itself and we made it very contextual, right? So there are two things, right? So one, right, so which generative AI help, and the other is like the contextualization, which is like primarily we were working on other artificial intelligence or machine learning models primarily, right? So in-house, right? So enabling personalization, et cetera. So what we did primarily was, right, so in, in case of hotels primarily was, right, so to make the content summarization very contextual, right? So if you are a, a family traveler, right, so you are, you may be less interested in what a solo traveler uh, left a review about the property itself. You are looking for other family travelers reviews and those kind of things. And that's how uh, if you go onto the platform right now, you would see, right, so very contextual summarized summaries of content summarization. The other use case which we dwelled primarily on to, right, uh, was a mix of not just like, so uh, Gen AI triggered that, but like so we used other tech stack primarily like speech to text text to speech and a combination of like so uh, 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 gen ai models or foundational models as well right so which is to use uh, uh, like voice based flight booking engine right so where like mm -hmm. so and this was primarily right to solve it for the bharat jinta right and internal code name for the bot as well as like flight bharat bot right wherein right so users are very comfortable speaking in their native language right so uh, and um, and this is not a language which is um, uh, like very textbook specific right we, uh, these are like very colloquial right everyday use of language and um, uh, we wanted to make a, a seamless experience right so and we had invested earlier into different solutions tried doing multiple experiments with vernacular etc things uh, were succeeded we had some good wins uh, some were not so successful etc but this time right so with uh, the, the whole push uh, by chat gpt etc right so we were able to make uh, make it really usable product and we saw good traction on the uh, flights voice bot as well the other uh, use case were uh, again into holiday space holidays is again a complex itinerary right so a user typically um, like so wants to explore uh, discover a lot of things and then finalize the itinerary and then book right so and the hand holding was done earlier through human agents earlier and this time right so uh, we did it through a chatbot interface using chat gpt and hence right so the like so and these are the broader buckets right we where we saw good amount of real world use cases going live and having a great impact where we were able to reduce the uh, human use or customer interactions, uh, yeah. bringing good value, uh, increase the discovery by the user himself uh, on holidays uh, bot as well. So and and apart from this as well, there, there were many use cases which we shipped internally uh, uh, for internal customers. Uh, we are looking primarily, it's not just like so, uh, uh, so solving and automating things uh, for customers primarily, but like, so again, for developers, they are using code, uh, uh, like uh, like generation, et cetera, 
and utilizing the power of uh, Gen AI primarily to write test cases, to do certain, certain automation related stuff. Uh, personalized recommendations, notifications is something, right? So like co content copies, uh, et cetera. So uh, there were like plenty of smaller use cases, bigger use cases, which we were able to ship into production uh, it, in a very small period of time. And hence, like, again, emphasizing on the fact that, right? So mm -hmm. many clients across the world are helping you solve uh, key challenges and issues. Yeah. Yeah. You know, very, very interesting, uh, Piyush. Uh, thanks for sharing that. Uh, was there a was there a framework or a thought process that you use to to just think where to prioritize these investments? Right. The number of use cases, and I'm sure this is a long journey, right? So, how how did you go about thinking and and identifying these low hanging fruits? Yeah. No. Absolutely. Like so, the framework, right? So. Uh, I would say, right, so it was not a different framework this time we which we used, but like so having very clear objectives onto, right, so what we want to achieve uh, and then having the matrices defined associated with it, right? Do we have the good data associated with it? Is it good quality data? Um, uh, uh, like so because like so and am i going to be able to solve this use case right or is it just like so i'm just jumping onto something but we don't have the data we don't have the tech stack we don't have skill set etc right so we try to attack this uh, uh like problems like and choosing the problem right uh, the question is right so can other organizations use some framework uh, my advice would be right so uh go with right so whatever framework you have uh, to choose uh, the existing pieces just focus on like having very clear objective that is going to be the must have and then secondly having those matrices to measure the success failure etc because like so otherwise right so uh, because you are going bold with everything right so the co core theme for us was to go bold right so uh, don't be like so um, in saying like do experiments right so and with experiments without measurement would lead to like chaos right so and hence refrain from those kind of things have have clear matrices um and the third thing uh, you would have business outcomes right so um and uh, those mm -hmm. give you competitive edges right so and we have seen that right and absolutely like so those three things uh, helped us, right? So where uh, in in not just shipping uh, things in production, but like so really solving some uh, good use cases. Yeah, yeah. So so Vishal, I know you're doing a lot of research on on Gen AI adoption uh, trends globally. Uh, what are some of the use cases that you're seeing? I know there are lots and lots of them, but more prominent ones uh, that have uh, reached uh, scaled adoption, right? And then uh, also, how should one think about uh, identifying these use cases and a lot of enterprises are still thinking about you know a lot of POCs but but where do we really focus our big investments yes yeah, so I think you know I echo you know Piyush thoughts see I think one of the key things happening is the availability of taught data and the content base is deciding where gen AI can be applied and used in a lot of ways right so while you know if i if i share from what i see you know in the broader industry while we see gen ai being experimented in a lot of different areas but three areas or three domains have come up as the uh you know areas where most of the action is happening you know number one for sure is customer service or what we want you want to call customer operations so think of you know a customer executive talking to a potential customer and there is a system, a tool, a Gen AI tool, which is helping, hey, look, this is the history of the customer. This is what we have spoken to the customer in the past. And these are the potential things that you can potentially talk about you know, to the customer. So an assistant uh, kind of a tool, which is helping the customer executives to kind of, you know, have a have the right conversation or more or better conversation with the customer. So that's one big area where a lot of the action is happening. Second is sales and marketing. So think of, you know, a generative AI tool helping create marketing memos or personalized emails that can be used to reach out to a large set of audience. So sales and marketing is another area because think of it this way, in marketing, there's a lot of need for creating or generating content, right? New content. That's where, you know, something like Gen AI kind of, you know, rightly fits in. So sales and marketing is the second area. And third area where we see a lot of action happening is in the broader bucket of IT operations. And specifically, I'll call out software engineering uh, because there are a lot of tools, especially with Microsoft Copilot, you know, you can start creating, you know, your own code 
Now, of course, you know the tools can't create you know the hundred percent of the code by 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 itself. You know there has to be a human in the loop. But we are definitely seeing you know some of these tools emerging, which are helping in the code creation, development, testing, all of those uh, you know the entire software development life cycle, STLC cycle, where these tools are helping a lot. So these are the three areas you know where we are seeing most of the action happening when it comes to Gen AI. Of course, as I said, there are multiple other areas. There are industry specific uh, you know use cases. For example, you know drug discovery in life sciences you know similarly other use cases in other industries where a lot of experimentation is is currently happening but given the ease of adoption in these three areas customer service operations sales and marketing and it operations as well as the availability of you know content and data uh, is is why we are seeing a large part of the adoption happening in these three areas now the second part to your question is how should you know one start looking at it and as piyush said right one of yeah. the things they looked at is Look, we looked at you know what what value you know this use case can provide, how much would it cost us, and at the same time start looking at you know whether we can do it or not. So one of the things that I'll share is, and and this is based on my multiple conversations. See the ROI and the cost part is pertinent, and I think we'll talk about it. But let me talk about purely from an applicability standpoint. You know whether how should we start thinking about Gen AI, and there are two broad things to look at. Number one, what is the potential? uh which which means what is the amenability of the area to application of gen ai and within that potential part there are three or four things to to consider number one for sure is the content or data availability whether you have access to the data which can be used to train the gen ai foundational model right uh which is self explanatory the second is and interestingly need for generative capabilities the ai has always been there you know ai as a technology has existed for more than 50 years the term was itself coined in somewhere around 1960 ai is nothing new generative ai is new where you know the the tool the technology is generating fundamentally new content so if you want to apply generative ai check if the particular area or use case does it even is there even a need for generative capabilities to give you an example think of let's say i am i am i am i am a manufacturing company and i have to predict my inventory right and how much do i need to produce and how much do i need to store that's mere prediction game you don't need to generate anything you don't need gen ai on that whereas you know if i have to do create something as a marketing material or a marketing memo absolutely yes you you know a generative ai solution can help so the need for generative capabilities another thing then uh, uh, what is the kind of reasoning involved so if it is a very very complex task probably gen ai may not be a good solution so think of it this way if you have to write a very very complex code versus a simple code a simple code yes there are code generators gen ai code generators which can help but for a very complex code it's actually the developer who has to you know create it and the last thing within the overall potential bucket is the dynamism of the knowledge base so this essentially depicts what is the rate of change of the knowledge based on which a task is performed so if the dynamism is very high it is actually good for the gen ai tool because the humans can't process so much dynamism so think of it this way let me give you an example if you have to generate stock prices let's say today depending upon multiple current events it's very difficult for a human to do that but the generative ai tool by considering all the different parameters all the let's say the news items pouring in what happened yesterday what happened today morning the company reports everything that is where the tool will become very good so this is what defines as the potential but the uh, there is second bucket also broad bucket that we need to think through which is the ease of, of adoption which means you know mm. you need to measure what are the road blocks in the path of adoption and within this ease of adoption there are three things one needs to look at number one what's the regulatory environment which means what is the degree of regulation the more regulated a business difficult to apply gen ai think of banking operations banking operations are highly you know regulated it will be very difficult to use gen ai in that because one you know the data will be scarce what data will be used to train gen ai and also the output from a gen ai system is probabilistic at best it's not deterministic right it's not an automation tool so if it is probabilistic the bank doesn't know what output the uh, solution will create and there will be jitters as to you know what it can do so the regulation you know can act as a roadblock number 2 the data sensitivity if the data is highly sensitive again you know you can't use it to train the model because there will be risks involved so think of pii healthcare data right then it becomes very difficult to use that data to create the tool 
And then the third part is within this overall bucket of ease of adoption is the criticality of the process, which is importance of the process as measured by the actual or perceived cost of error. What if the process goes wrong because of the truth? Who owns the you know responsibility for that? So again, think of an example. You know, you have to communicate to a particular employee on their let's say leave request versus you create an email or generating an email campaign for an event where you have to reach out to let's say hundred or thousand people. In the second case, if something goes wrong, if the tool creates something wrong, you know that's going to impact thousand lives. Who owns the you know the cost of error? So broadly, so just to summarize, you know the potential, which is you know measure the amenability of you know the process for Gen AI versus what is the ease of adoption. I think these two, if you broadly look at it and try to think about it, will help you analyze whether you know a particular area can be uh, you know looked at for the application of Gen AI or not. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's a that's a nice way to put it. Maybe a two by two with with uh, amenability and ease, and then put all the use cases and then probably do some analysis and see where uh, and of course Piyush, to your point i think the having clear objectives is is of course very important right so a lot of uh, money gets invested in in areas uh, as experiments but they may not have clear objectives and then you know the roi becomes a big question but we shall a, a, a nice segue uh, into uh, some of the the risk and challenges i know uh, the we I think the transformational impact on business is fairly clear, uh, but then there are also these concerns uh, uh, which are emerging related to various aspects of the technology itself. So, for example, you know, data privacy, security, uh, explainability, uh, who checks if it's correct, uh, ownership, who owns the output. Um, so, what are your takes? Uh, what 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 is your take, Piyush, on the risk associated with with Gen AI? Uh, and and as you've been adopting this within make my trip what are the steps that you are taking to identify and mitigate some of these risks around gen ai yeah uh, so uh, our take is right so some of the risks which are talked about are not new and some are new right so uh, so those two buckets right so and for example right so even with the advent of right so big data and ai right so people talked about privacy and like so data production etc and you need to as an organization you need to have like so all, all the uh, mitigation related risk and mitigation related steps related to data protection and rest of things right so i would say right so one bucket need to be treated uh, in a similar manner rather than like so anything specific to gen ai per se right so uh, but the other key part right so where some of some are very new challenges in terms of as you mentioned right so who owns it uh who owns what right so if you're using any maybe like some um closed source or open source um foundational models to accomplish a task or automate something or generate some content uh out of it right so who owns it who owns the liability and who owns those kind of things that required right so good amount of uh again like rethinking and adding to the organization uh, like the governance charter i would say right so broadly right so and um, it's not just a governance charter even every feature need to be looked at thought through even from like for example the use cases which vishal was talking about sales and marketing right you need to generate content and ship out right uh, mm. there is a brand associated with uh, the content which you are generating right and every brand has its own theming um, like a language brand language to talk about and those kind of things and you need to put all the safeguards with respect to protecting those things right so in saying okay i am not going to generate something which is which the brand value doesn't care or the brand language doesn't speak about i, I don't want to generate a content which is not uh, well understood by my customers right and hence right so um, you I, I the advice which i am and learnings for uh, from our side was right so bucketize into two key buckets right so one the all the privacy governance uh, risks uh, etc put it into one bucket look through um, your data protection um, and rest of the learnings um, um, and and evolve right? and that's a continuous process right of evolving and relooking talk to experts in industry right have uh, have good good like so expert consultations done um, 
like because like so that review helps uh, you uh, because if you are overlooking something right so those 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 could can be brought back to you the second key bucket right so uh, where as as i said right so every nuanced feature which you are shipping with gene i need to thought through from all dimensions right so uh, as i mentioned right from both brand content which you are generating putting up automating uh, and then there are risk associated to everything right so um, and it could be any other uh, you can simplify in saying okay uh, a new member in your content team might be generating a new content poses a similar risk but as vishal mentioned the risk here is like so you are not generating one copy you are generating like thousand and thousands of copies and humanly impossible to even review and hence right so again automation to your help in terms of right uh, seeing okay right um, you need to devise those um, automations to be able to um, pick these things and have um, an eye on it right so but yeah, yeah. Uh, also learning uh, so uh, as we are shipping new, new use cases like red teaming is something which again like so coming from microsoft right where uh, if you need to do like so have all like the negative cases etc so red teaming um, is is helping in in some of the things primarily related to chatbot uh, but yeah there are other nuances to many other use cases specifically yeah yeah vishal uh, any 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 other best practices yeah. you are seeing uh, beyond yeah, no, what no so i no, i think piyush uh, you know covered it very well i mean I, if, if i had to just wrap it up kind of you know see the way we see the risk is uh, you know four fundamental risks you know if i have to kind of put it this way you know the data security privacy is the biggest risk of course because you know gen ai as a technology you know needs a lot of data to to get trained on and at the same time it generates a lot of data in terms of content and other things so to ensure that the data remains in your enterprise walls it doesn't go out it's kind of a big risk think of the example of mm -hmm. samsung i think samsung was uh, you know the public example one of the data engineers in samsung uh, you know kind of created uh, or uploaded some proprietary code to the tool because he or she wanted to optimize that code but that the system the the chatbot open ai chat gpt learned from that code and then it became kind of a public knowledge so the trade secret got leaked to the public that kind of a big red flag right the data privacy then becomes you know very very important because it might even lead to the risk of you know uh, your existence as an organization because if your trade secrets go out you know then what is it that you have right so the data security privacy kind of becomes extremely important and that is why you know what piyush mentioned you know we have seen enterprises implying uh, uh, applying guardrails ensuring that the data does not their proprietary data or trade secrets does not go out of enterprise walls number 2 is very interestingly this might lead us to a philosophical philosophical conversation i don't want to go there but the point is how do you who who tells what the output generated by the tool is right or wrong right which is kind of the explainability part or in 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 chat gpt parlance the hallucinations if you ask a certain question to the tool and the question responds there is no guarantee that the answer is right or is based on facts it can be something which is entirely made up by the tool because it's it still works on a probabilistic way so the explainability part right ensuring that the output that you are getting is relevant is right it's 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 kind of difficult right now it's it's not easy to crack and and there are a lot of i personally know there are a lot of even startups yes, start which are being set up just with the purpose of helping with the explainability part the third is uh, you know the uh, uh, ethicality and bias which means see uh, at the end of the day an ai tool is what it learns from the data that has been fed to right it's kind of garbage in garbage out if you train the tool on biased data the output will be biased as well so so one has to be very very thorough and comprehensive in ensuring the right data is being fed to train the tool so ethicality bias is not there and these three things were always there with ai the fourth thing which is new with generative ai is what we have spoken about is the ownership generative ai is fundamentally generating new content creating new content or new artifacts if it is creating something new who owns it right there's a class action lawsuit going on between microsoft uh, github and some of the independent contributors because microsoft trained its uh, copilot codex whatever they call it uh, gen ai model on the open source code that was available on github 
And you know, while it was open source, it was not meant for commercial use. And Microsoft started using it for commercial use. So there was this, uh, there is still lawsuit going on. So because the ownership part, first of all, the data that you are feeding to the system to 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 train, you know, you need to have ownership of that data. If you are training it on some proprietary data of a third party organizations, there will be issues. Secondly, the output generated by the tool, right? Who owns it? Because if you trained your system on a third party data, then they can potentially claim the output as well from the tool. So this ownership the responsibility part is unclear right now. Is it the tool creator who owns the responsibility? Is it the organization finally who owns the responsibility? Is it the data owner who owns the responsibility? It is unclear. There are multiple lawsuits in the industry, but one has to be very clear to take this aspect into mind as well. And probably this is where, you know, I think what we're hearing is that legal representation in an organization will also become important. In, in AI initiative, AI project, there has to be some involvement from the legal department to ensure that there are no legal risks involved, you know, while implementing Gen AI. Yeah. Yeah, which all makes sense. Yeah, just two things. Right? So, just wanted to add to hallucinations uh, part, which which Vishal said, right? So, one of the things which probably like so again as a learning from our side, right? So, with, so utilize, right? So, I am sure like so uh, companies like us would have like good search catalog and um, other pieces. So, utilize your internal information as much as you can because you can rely more on to those kind of things rather than like so the open information uh, from like foundational models. So that's number one. The second part, right? So in terms of, right? So uh, like, so whenever like, so you're working, right? So have the data tagged properly, right? So, so this is a third party data. This is your internal data, having good catalog and governance practices uh, internally within the organization helps, right? So because like, so at the end of the day, like, so, many engineers or data scientists get excited about like so okay can 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 i just use it and uh, like show okay this is possible uh, but ha having those filtration tagging uh, is is going to be critical in your overall like process perspective and hence like so don't uh, like uh, uh, don't just like so lose the focus primarily on from the process perspective as well yeah and just wanted to add those two things yeah yeah go ahead yeah no i think uh i think it this is still evolving and i'm sure uh i think a lot of developments will happen it, it's a very fast evolving tech and 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 i think it's just come to think of it it's just about 10 months 11 months now um so so i'm sure we are still figuring out and i think a lot of new developments will come in including a lot of tech solutions around some of these things um the shifting gears i think i think the uh, a lot of enterprises are still in the early stages of experimenting with Gen AI, and many of them are still figuring out where to apply and uh, what are some of the use cases. And 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 there's the obvious question about ROI. That's a big question, right? Um, these are big investments. So, uh, how are you looking um, at the ROI from Gen AI investments, Piyush? Um, you know, are you measuring it? Uh, is there a uh, a good way? What have you learned as you've kind of uh, started measuring some of those things? Um, and and also the cost con considerations of deploying Gen AI and and any learnings or or thought process around that. Yeah, some of it um, I, I mentioned earlier as well, right? So um, having very clear uh, key and like matrices which you want to key KPIs which you want to measure, right? So before even like signing up and mm -hmm. uh, walking that path is going to be very critical. And if you have defined your clear objectives and having a measurable KPIs very well defined, then it is just a matter of defining that feature and experiment well within your ecosystem and then measuring it. Now coming back to the execution part of it, right? So how, like, so on our side, right? So we said like, okay, let's partner it strategically with some um, good organization, right? So in, in our case, right, we started with Microsoft primarily, right? And then like, so that, that uh, strategic partnership helps, right? So um, because like, so, you are getting to know each and every bit of right so working together uh, collaboratively uh, with with that team the other is like the internal collaboration also helps right so it's not like so just the uh, technology team which he needs to uh, just learn and adopt 
this piece right so um so internally right so every stakeholder be it like so sales marketing for folks to everyone right so taking every internal um, like stakeholder uh, was like helpful in our case right so where mm-hmm. right so everybody was on board right to uh, make it work right um, internally and um, uh, that that was like uh, like really helpful um, in terms of uh, choosing the right um, um, use cases primarily and then executing it right and then for example like some of the uh, things right so for example in data engineering uh, voice bot uh, baking in from ground up etc and then handing over to flight team itself to maintain and like work and evolve on those kind of things right so and and that 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 that's again uh, another way of like so experimenting and like making it mainstream with uh, is going to be really important right you can't just keep on continuing with it that experiment for long if it, it is giving good signs etc back um, uh, go back and make it mainstream and the other yeah. key part is so look at like so um, not just like so so one other thing right so over the period of time is like so no one model is going to rule them all right so it's not like just chat gpt uh, which is going to do everything for you and magical etc and hence focus on okay and for luckily right so we have been investing onto ai machine learning part of it right over the over many years and we had good amount of tool many many tools models etc internally which was taken and then stitched together with this for example uh, like natural language understanding is like now better with large language models here right so now utilize your large language models with good prompts etc for good language understanding and then do the rest of the things with other tools in with you right so other machine very specific machine learning models etc and stitch together a solution rather than like trying to solve everything through llms itself right so don't go um, like expect right so now you would have a magic wand with uh, the, these foundational models or um, other generative ai uh, models right so uh, like and here right so as we shall also said right it's not just uh, text to text it's like text to image text to video etc and now like so every modality is coming big time right so and if you see even on hugging face right so the newer models are coming up not just on text to text they are primarily like so uh, focused more on to images videos etc and the open community is evolve getting evolved and having a good sense of uh, what's going on to uh, open ai community is going to be really beneficial for organization and uh, some of our data scientists are working even collaborating uh, primarily on to open ai community and that helps right so now you know the state of art what is going on and that helps right so you, you know okay this is possible that was not possible this is how to approach those kind of things this is the data sets which are getting utilized to build these kind of models etc so in totality right so doing these things uh, like ease your journey from like ground zero right so if you are starting on day zero my advice would be right start with a start like some strategic partner etc or maybe like some apis because that would give you a kick start but eventually you need to dive in as i said right uh, to go bold right it's not going to be a theme where you can be like truly conservative and just look looking from outside okay something is happening okay when things will mature we will do something right then probably you would have lost the competitive edge right so my my yeah. only advice there is like follow a good process if you have followed the good good process taken care of like so making sure your internal stakeholders everybody is on board it etc and then um, you have uh, explored like so uh, right tool and model to do the right thing right don't expect llms to do everything for you right if you have followed those kind of things i'm sure like so you would have some successes and that's how you keep on learning and evolving it's a journey for us as well yeah yeah, yeah. so we should talk to... about data yeah so, sorry we shall go ahead yeah, so to add to that, see again, you know, to your point, uh, Ashish, on the ROI, the ROI, uh, mm-hmm. this is a hard conversation, not an easy one, because 
you know the output or the value from some of these may may come out in the long term rather than immediate yeah and that is that is where we also received a question you know it's actually linked to it you know someone has posted a question around how do you look at you know self hosted gen ai services over cloud provided gen ai services right or saas model now you know and 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 piyush i would love to hear your thoughts as well but the way i kind of think about it is there are three things to consider when you're kind of making such a choice one what is the value you are getting from the use case where you are deploying gen ai how much it's going to cost you these are the two fundamental things right what i'm getting out of it what i'm paying for it and then what is the risk associated with this these are the three things that become consideration now the value part is dependent upon the use case you are using you know how critical it is you know is it directly customer facing its internal what kind of benefits you are getting out of it so value part i can't comment but from a cost and risk standpoint we are very clear if you are creating something self hosted gen ai services as opposed to cloud based saas of course the you know your your self hosted will be more expensive you have to invest in the infrastructure and the tooling and everything uh but it may have long term benefits right if you are using some it may it may become cheaper in the long term if you are planning to do this something as a big thing and for a for a long period of time but in the short term it will be definitely more expensive as compared to a cloud hosted service on the risk part it's reverse of course the cloud hosted service there are already risks associated with it yes you know some of the leading vendors like microsoft and google they are embedding some of the responsible ai kind of components in their llms and and tools but still you know there is some inherent risk involved in cloud because you might be sharing your data outside your organization walls so a self hosted gen ai service will definitely take care of the risk component but it will also be more expensive at least in the short term the third thing which is the value is debatable depending upon the use case so that's how i would kind of put it if you have to select between the between the two but you have would be you know good to good to know your thought as well how you are going about it no no absolutely vishal you have already covered right so like so in terms of cost uh, part of it right so but i would like to just add uh, one thing apart from cost is going to be latency as well right so and uh, and uh, because like so in certain uh, user scenarios etc you want like so millisecond responses uh, and here you have like uh, again like um, the large language models uh, out there right so it's a good amount of model latency is added right uh, because of you have like so many millions or billions of parameters uh, primarily right uh, over which and then trillions of tokens over, over which these models are trained on to right um and uh, and hence right so you look at like so uh, apart from like while choosing which ones you uh, to go for look look at the latency part of it um, that that's one thing the other key part uh, there is right so uh, which we have already covered right do you have the data to like really make it work uh, internally like so make it self hosted etc and the second is like uh, cost in terms of like again like so most of it are uh, gpu hungry right so and gpus are getting like way costlier and like the availability is again of a question itself uh, but yeah i'm very hopeful that like so now as we in, in starting as well right we mentioned like now you have like so millions of good folks applying their brain onto things are going to be cheaper uh, going forward it is expensive right now uh, but uh, hopefully and the and i i will resonate like 110% with vishal in terms of right uh, one you need to see right so is it going to be uh, you are looking at a long term value creation or you are just looking at right now like something to tick off and saying okay we we, we are also doing generative ai no right uh, and organizations at scale would want to invest on to these things and similarly any other technology per se because like and hence because they see real value right if you are seeing real value you would invest on to these things from longer term perspective and there are two parts to it right one is like so you can just write simple prompts and keep on prompting on to some others uh, models which you don't have control on to or you can have your own model where you have good control on to it could be like so you picking up some op open source or like um, other available models and fine tune the outer layers of the model as well so rather than like so building it everything from scratch right so um, there are approaches right where 
like fine tuning helps much more better and then having a good predictable control because like so when you are using it for enterprises you want predictability you can't just like uh, afford hallucinations and other kind of things right so you want a very predictable outcome um, from whatever like use case you have chosen and hence right so fine tuning some of the models uh, um, like uh, would help uh, uh, in addition to when, when you are exploring that path itself yeah 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 and then Jewish, we talked about the models but at the end of the day the data is yeah yeah absolutely is the most right so getting the right quality of data is, is critical the right and quality of tag data is the most important right. thing right which is it, 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 the most important yeah it's the see i mean for i can share yeah. this see, for and a, that's the for foundation good, yeah. yeah for a good amount of time people were actually spending time on fine tuning the model because they thought the output would get better if I spend time in you know, optimizing and fine tuning my model. But now people have realized that there is only so much optimization you can do. The real value or you know the output generated depends a lot on data. So now a lot of the efforts are on you know collecting the right data and as Piyush mentioned earlier, annotating and labeling the data. That's also an art. In a lot of ways, you know, if you have the domain experts, so let's say I've even heard cases where, let's say, in the healthcare industry, if you're annotating the data, you're actually having nurses or doctors do that in some cases. Because, let's say, an MRI scan or an X-ray scan, if you have to annotate what to look at within the a layman person like me doing it versus a doctor doing it, there's a huge difference that will come out in terms of how the data is being labeled. So the labeling and annotation part also become extremely critical. So the data is kind of the gold mine, I would say, you know, when it comes to uh, AI solutions. So, so Piyush, with all these tons of data that Make My Trip Tip has, what's your data strategy, and and how are you thinking about you know the guardrails uh, around the data that you have? No, so having a strong like so data governance framework, uh, not just for generative AI specifically, helps, right? So in our case also, like so, and all the compliances which the organization like us need to go through. Uh, be, 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 a, be it like PCI DSS 4.0 to like everything GDPR compliant to now you have a DPDP bill uh, in India, right? Uh, forcing you to uh, all, all those things also helps. But at the end of the day, right? So having a good process is really important apart from just having a layout in terms of policies. And we shall mention, right? So the ethical use of and you need to live by those ethical use of standards etc as well right so you can't be just utilizing any of the pi information etc to in the name of personalization etc and those things right so uh, large organization like us right so live by right so and and putting up right processes um, with standards uh, protocols etc lay the core foundation of right so having uh, like good adoption and you and that that then you at least like so leaders are like us then go to a good sleep and saying okay we have done our part right right in terms of right so we are we have taken care of the process and rest of the things then are taken care of by itself. yeah yeah in, in in fact we now have a, a data maturity model and framework in fact our own everest group proprietary framework and we've seen a lot of enterprises looking at just going through that that assessment to kind of see where they are and then making you know a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, changes to their uh, data strategy because it, it's a no, very important piece like so because of we started data. our journey way back um, many years ago so so I would say like so in the uh, like so maturity curve, right? So we are not there in ki roti kapla makan ni dhund rahe hain. <laughs> we are up there, right? So figure, trying to figure out, right? So the real value insights, et cetera, and those kind of things yeah. from from uh, the ecosystem primarily. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Pipush, one uh, point that you mentioned was around uh, leveraging the external partners, right? Uh, what to, and that's a very important decision as you are thinking through this journey, right? Uh, sometimes for POCs, we may want to do it ourselves. And sometimes you may think of uh, leveraging a third party, uh, you know, SI or a tech vendor or, a, or a AI specialist, something like that. How do you think about where do you bring in an external party for what type of work what do you do in-house with your own teams invest in your own capabilities how, how do you kind of think about that decision 
सो आर्ट एक वॉज राइट सो यू वुड हैव योर यू हैव टू हैव योर इंटरनल टीम वेल ट्रेन इट एंड इट्स अ कॉन्टिन्यूस लर्निंग थिंग राइट सो थिंग्स आर इवॉल्विंग कॉन्टिन्यूसली राइट एंड हेंस यू नीड टू कीप ऑन लर्निंग कॉन्टिन्यूसली इट्स इट्स अ कॉन्टिन्यूस थिंग इवन ऑन गवर्नेंस एंड रेस्ट ऑफ थिंग्स राइट रिस्पॉन्सिबल ए आई मॉडल्स एवरीथिंग द टेक्स टैग एक्सेट्रा बट हैविंग अ स्ट्रेटेजिक पार्टनर एंड एक्सपर्ट्स consultants primarily right so who can guide you on that path things becomes really easy and systematic and with the process itself right and uh, having these combinations right so having a good internal team uh, with good skill set and who are continuously learning um, along with the other two right uh, which is like so a strategic partner and then expert uh, consultants really makes the process and the adoption part of it easier and some of that right i mentioned internal stakeholders right so it's not just then you need to sell it internally for adoption right so the partners helps you adopt it as well and here i am choosing partner as in partner itself not in terms of a tech vendor kind of a relationship we should look for primarily like so Uh, a partner who really thinks through those things and helps you walk that journey uh, primarily on that path right so uh, i we really value those things yeah yeah yeah, yeah makes sense um vishal any i know we are on, almost on top of the hour uh, but uh, any any parting comments vishal uh, any best practices uh, that you have uh, seen um, from other enterprises that you would like to share uh, to adopt this exciting yeah. new technology see, see i will i will pick what you said you said you know be bold this is what i will tell everyone that see this is a technology which can fundamentally disrupt every business every area you have to take the risks if you want to stay relevant in the game or if you want to beat your competition because if you don't do it there might even be an existential threat to your business so be bold you know go ahead experiment start adopting this technology and you know utilize what we have said right look at the value you want to derive you know look at the costs you know what it will cost you and look at you know what risks are involved these three should command where you are experimenting where you are put, putting your money you know when it comes to gen ai but the but the but the broader message is this is something which is more fundamental more disruptive and you know staying out of it or not being in the game might lead to existential threat so so to be bold experiment and 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 start looking at areas where you can apply gen ai yeah also i am not sure if there are any technology folks on call but i would urge them to be the value creator as well right in 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 the whole chain right so uh, create more models like so work with the community primarily right so and, and be a value creator don't be just the user of it right so just want to add to what vishal said right so uh, those would be party comments from my side yeah excellent excellent thanks thanks piyush thanks vishal i think this was a very engaging and a very interesting conversation i hope yeah. our uh, attendees uh, did find it useful um we would encourage you to keep sharing your questions we took a few questions but but i know we're almost on top of the hour but if you have more questions coming up feel free to to post uh, we will try and uh, address them one on one if not uh, this is a series we will have more of these sessions where we where we will invite other industry practitioners uh, and other experts to to share their perspectives on the ground uh it's a fast evolving field so so i'm sure there's a lot to be unpacked and uncovered in 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 uh, in months to come so with that uh, putting a wrap on this uh, thank you again piyush and vishal uh, for being very candid and sharing your perspectives uh, and thanks to all the attendees for your patient listening um look forward to seeing you again thank you thank you thank you thank you everyone bye bye